Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fuss. We're here for a live edition of the show. This is Cabernet Day, started by Rick Backus um, a couple years ago. So uh, they had a hangout earlier, uh, Google, uh, Zagat was doing a hangout, and um, uh, had a few people on there, and uh, I didn't get the invite to join them. So I was a little bit bummed by that. They had two or three slots open, and... Um, we're going to go through the wines that I chose to do for Cabernet Day. You know, I was hoping to hang out with people. I, I invited some people to hang out for an after party, but um, alas, it didn't seem to, uh, either they weren't able to join or what, but I've invited several people. I invited by my wine people again and all that. Um, obviously, the video quality is not the normal video quality. I'm, I'm actually sitting on the couch, chilling out. Um, I've, I've got everything here play to the TV so I can actually look up. Uh, look ahead, so that's why I see you looking up like that. But, um, anyway, so I'm going to try to look right at the little camera here. So, um, got four wines to do. So, uh, the first wine we're going to, we're going to do, I already have, I've already had a little bit of this today. Uh, since I thought I was going to be drinking with people and not just viewing wine, uh, I decided to have a little bit of, a little bit of it, like a, like a, a couple of ounces at lunch. By the way, I had a roast beef sandwich. It went wonderful with it. So let's just get right into it. Uh, this is the uh, 2008 Chateau de la Bonnière, Bon 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 Produce pretty much just red wine there. And not just any red wine, but Cabernet Franc. Alright, so first of all, we'll, we'll, you know, that's what I need to do is get the time to get started so I can see how long it is yapping. Okay, so, um, anyway, uh, Cabernet Franc is one of the parents of Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, you can probably figure out what the other parent was. That's right, Sauvignon Blanc. So, uh, Cabernet Franc um, is just one of those grapes that uh, created Cabernet Sauvignon, so it's called Cabernet Day today, so we're doing that. So um, anyway, I uh, started off with this one. This, uh, this, All these bottles have been open for about two-ish hours now, probably a little longer than that, uh, probably a little longer than two hours. Um, like I said, I already had a little bit of this one. When I initially started drinking it, it um, we felt a little closed, uh, but by the time I finished Drinking it, I only have like a couple ounces of it. Um, by the time I finish drinking it, it, uh, you know, I'm going to turn off the lights. Turn that off. Turn that off. Anyway, um, so once I did that, uh, it started opening up a little bit. So let's check it out. Um, it's got a decent, pretty decent color. Um, we were told not to use brick. But, you know, it's, it's a garnet color almost. It doesn't have too much brown to it. Um, it has a bit of, it has a slight staining of the glass, though not a whole lot, but very slight staining of the glass. Yeah, this is, like I said, the bottle's been open for a little while. That I've actually, I actually poured this into the glass probably 20 minutes, maybe 30 minutes ago, in anticipation of people joining me, but. Since no one's joining me, and I didn't really feel like spending the whole big time of creating green screens, we'll just sit on the couch. Hopefully this won't be too bad. All right, so, um, so, uh, get a little Brett on this. Not a whole lot, so Brett, the Brettomyces, uh, yeast, um, you get a little bit of farnia, but it's, it's not, like, really, really bad. Some people are all, 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 
very uh, averse to having any in the wine. Very slight. When I first had some of the wine, I didn't taste any of it, so or I didn't really smell any of it. Um, but you get a little bit of that funk to it, a little bit of earth. Um, it's very, it's very mineral. Mineral. There's more minerality than fruit in it. But you're getting some of the darker red fruits. Um, maybe some like black cherry. But what's what does Cabernet Franc have all the time? Almost all the time. Pepper. Get that bell pepper aspect. Okay. Um, and I can't remember the chemical for the bell pepper, why we smell it. So uh, we need to look that up real quick before we get move on. Um, you think me being the Cabernet Trump fan that I am, I just always know that. Okay. But um, bell pepper, uh, bell pepper, aroma, and wine. There we go. Google's finishing it off for me. Google. Um, Let's see here. Here we go. Thank you for the for the. Uh, okay, here we go. So here is in. That's it. Here is in. I knew I knew who it was. I just can't remember. All right. So um, anyway, uh, so you get the pyrazine, so you get the bell pepper aspect. So. It's a little freaky because when you look at the the image, it's reversed on my end. But when you actually watch this on, you know, when you watched it, it's normal. So, uh, kind of light on the tan, not light, but not very heavy tannins. Uh, I'd probably call them medium tannins, but it's not you're really coating it. You just get really lots of that bell pepper. Um, it's pretty. I mean. I find it pretty tasty. Um, a little earth driven, not a fruit forward wine. Uh, you're getting the darker fruits. But uh, again, with the, with the aroma, you're starting to get that kind of funkiness, almost a little bit of manure. Barnyard, you know, it's barnyard. I got the itchy nose now from all that. This was, oh, I forgot to say how much I paid for all these ones. Oh, my goodness. Where's my receipt? Uh, if I remember right, this was $12. Um, I mean, I just bought these today. So it was, it was a normally it's a 15 bucks, but it was on sale at Specs. Bought it at Specs, forgot about that part too. Um, anyway, it was like $12 and something. Um, so I mean, pretty good. Uh, it's also the most inexpensive of all the wines that I did buy today. So, um, I kind of expected it to be the lowest quality. Well, not quality, but no. I don't expect it to be, I expect it to have the least amount of wow factor. But, you know, the things been open for a while. Really, I think, maturing in the bottle, not maturing, but, you know, developing in the bottle with being open in the glass. And, uh, I'm also, a, you know, a sucker for probably a pearl. You know, it's, it's for $12, even you got it for 15 it's pretty very good. Definitely recommend buying it. Um, I'd give it probably, I, I'd give it personally an 88. I think it's, I think it's really, really pretty nice. Um, I don't think it's an 88, because I think it's, all right, so let's move on. Does have anyone joining the Google Hangout yet? All right, so we'll move this out of the way. The microphone on, uh, is, uh, is right here, right? Um, using my boom mic, try to get better sound than just using the internal microphone on the um, laptop. So I have no idea. How good this sound is going to be. 
hoping that I didn't just waste enough time and spending $100 on wine. Okay, so let's move on. All right, so um, we'll kind of go in order of, of price here. Well, not price. We're going to go, we're going to kind of, I'm going to end with something that's not the most expensive, but should be the top quality. Okay. Anyway, so uh, next here, uh, we've got the Slingshot 2010 Napa Valley Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, this particular wine, uh, suppo well, not supposedly, but one, supposedly this wine um, has, yeah, supposed to have a bunch of uh, Cabernet Franc in it. Not a bunch, but enough, not, not more than you can have in so so-called Cabernet Sauvignon. But it only has both in there, so that was one of the things that really caught my eye. The um, the person that specs was really like, you really should try this wine, it's awesome, really liked it. And that's one of the things, and why I bought the two of the ones I bought, um, is because of the recommendation by uh, the four person. Now, that person doesn't ring me up, that person doesn't get a commission on the wine or anything, but um, in both of the wines say shelf talkers, so these are ones that are featured. Now let's let's kind of go through retail real quick. Wines that are being featured aren't just being featured because somebody thought they were nice. Okay, thought they were great wines. Um, you know they're featured for a lot of reasons. Whether it's retail or restaurants, it could be they're overstocked in the wine, and they're quick shelf talkers or the you know like the last wine, like this one, this one. Uh, the the sale expires in the year. They probably are overstocked. They probably have a lot of it, and they're just trying to move it, discount it. I mean, that's why people discount anything, right? Not just just retail and junk. Um, so the shelf talkers, they, they may have gotten a good deal on it. They may be trying to get rid of it, not because it's a bad one, but maybe it's just not a, a big seller or a big mover. Um, so you know, that's where they're doing it. Um, there may be there may be something about it where the store gets extra credit from the corporate office, not credit as in literally money, but they may be getting tracked by these things. So when you know when your when your salesperson or your server comes up and like suggests certain things, many times it's that's what the uh, that's what the store is rated on, how much they sell this. Okay, so let's move on so we're not making this a forty minute thing. Alright, so uh, slingshot, uh, they're at, they're in Napa. Uh, the gentleman who started it's actually uh, is in Houston, and his son is now the wine maker. Uh, if I can get to my iPad real quick here. Um, by the way, the last wine the uh, it's made by the uh, M. Cuzo, uh company, and uh, one of the things about them is that they are uh, uh, going into I guess into organic or biodynamic kind of stuff. They've been doing it for a while. All right, so. Um, James Stewart is the person who's running the winery, but the person who founded it was his father. And I try to find it. So Michael Stewart, Michael Stewart, uh, founded it in 1999. He was a Houston-based uh, after selling his Houston-based uh, computer company. Now I lived in Houston up until '97. Um, I don't know of any Houston-based computer company other than Compact. That might have been it. I didn't look to see if, until I just thought about it, um, if that was who it is. Oh, the point, the reason why I was pointing out that the microphone's over there is just, every time I reach over there for one of the bottles, you might be hearing a lot of noise. Um, let's see, compact computer. Let's see who, let's see who had that. Looking for the Wikipedia entry because they let's see here. Founded headquarters, key people. No, none of them were Michael Stewart. So anyway, just thought I'd look at it. But um, anyway, so whatever his computer company was. So he ninety nine. He decided he wanted to make wine, so he did. And I should have closed his tab. That was a really big cut there. Um. So uh, anyway, so they. What they want to do is they want to see what, what James wanted to do is what's the son. He wanted to create that, that the kind of elusive or the, not elusive, but that $20 great cab. So I, I paid like 20 bucks for the wine. It was like 20. 
Um, might have been 19, but I think it was 25. Um, anyway, so, um, he wanted to create this $20 cap instead of the $150 cap because, you know, especially with the economic downturn that happened the past few years, you know, wine, the, the premium wine market took a huge hit. So it was your value wines that were starting to really, people were going, hey, I can't afford that $100 bottle of wine anymore, but I want some decent wine. What do they, what do you got for 50 bucks? So they were, they were, they were doing the 50 and the 100 and 150, but they really were also, everyone was saying we need the $20, we need the good $20 cap. So never had it before, so let's check it out. You know, it's got nice color. Um, it's, it's already pretty aromatic. I can smell it without even sticking my nose in there. So I get, I get the smoke, I get the smokiness, like that smoke bomb type of thing. Lighter red fruits, not the dark red fruits. I mean, like I kind of go a little, a little bit of cherry. I don't really get any obvious wood and floral. I don't know. You're supposed to get something on the floor. I don't really get any floral. I'm trying to use the FEW thing, you know, as a, as a small thing. Pretty fruit forward, um, good fruit to it. You know, not not extracted over the top fruit. Um, it's definitely a new world wine because of that. Um, tannins are, are medium, maybe a little medium plus on the tannin. Um, you know, a decent body, you know, decent feel, mouthfeel to it. Um, not super high acidity. I'd really just call it kind of medium acid. Um, really, the fruit comes through more on the palate than it does on the nose. I don't really get that smokiness, that earthiness that as much on the palate, uh, really more fruit driven on the palate. Bit of creaminess to it also. So a little pie aspect. Um, you know, so what I mean by pie is like you get that kind of that kind of baked pie like crust part, okay, pastry a little bit, but you also get like that whipped cream, like that not necessarily cool whip, but like that whipped cream aspect that's like on top of the pie. So you're, you're getting that, that type of stuff. And there comes the, uh, uh, now, now I'm, I get a little bit of that pepper, the bell pepper. So, and, 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 and the reason that I, I would believe, besides that I'm getting the bell pepper and I'm looking for it, that there's cap franc in it, is that it's not unusual to put cap franc in, in a Cabernet Sauvignon blend. And that's what they do in Bordeaux, which is coming up. Um, but the, the salesperson, the person on the floor, said that there was Cabernet franc, even though there's nothing in the literature, nothing in the label, nothing in the website that says that. That's one of those things where like the wine rep or the seller for who for the distributor that gave them the information and probably has the actual um, spec sheet that tells them it's 75% Cabernet Sauvignon and 15% Cabernet Franc or whatever. Maybe it's 95% Cabernet Sauvignon and 5% Cabernet Franc. But my feeling is there's probably a good 10 to 15% Cabernet Franc in this because she did say it's probably one of the highest Cabernet Franc percentages. Uh, with a cap, so buy it. Um, it's pretty darn good. Uh, pretty fruity, um, but not overly, not like sweet, thickly sweet. Just got some piece of fruit. Um, moderate finish. I'd also give it an eight. So uh, let's move on to the next one. I have a commercial coming in here. I'm going to end up downloading this from YouTube and then re-uploading it to Blip just as well. That's my... All right, one more shot of the label. All right, so we are going to move on to the next wine. Now, this wine, the salesperson was super excited about showing me. So I said, hey, I'm looking for this, this, this. And she's like, 
well, do you want to, it doesn't have to be France for the Cabernet Franc, because it not going to be France. You know, it's typically what, you know, you're going to get anyway. So she, so she was like, well, we have like four Cab Francs from California. This is one of them. It's actually, I think it was the most expensive of them. This is the, was it Kennethick? Kennethick Ranch, Cabernet Franc, uh, this bottle is freaking heavy and all. 2007, uh, Caitlin selected Snake Grove from the Napa Valley. There you go, one more time. Get the, uh, all right, um, it's heavy. The bottle is super heavy. Rinse. How's your day been? Leave comments below. Whether it's here on YouTube or on the website or what. Leave some comments. I'll have, I'll have, I'll have links to all these places. Okay. So, um, I spent uh, 40 to $42 on this. So, we're not talking cheap wine and for having a trunk, 40 bucks. Is this, this would better be pretty darn good. Okay, uh, I saw they had a Cabernet Sauvignon in the shop too. Price, uh, I think it was a forty-eight, so a little more expensive. Um, so let's let's look at it real quick here. So um, this was uh, owned this was owned by a retired San Francisco neurosurgeon, um, Thomas D. E. Kennethick. So um, doesn't say when he started. We didn't say we started doing it, but um, the portfolio. Here we go. Not much information about about this one other than what I think the back label already said. So let's check it out. Uh, color, nice peach color, definitely red. Um, got a little bit of staining. Of course, if you remember, that I've had. Two other glasses, two other wines here, so um, to be stained this one is pretty awesome. All right, so this is you know definitely more of an American treatment of Cabernet Franc. You really do get that that creaminess on the nose, the vanilla um, from from the oak. We know that everybody, well, so we know. many winemakers use both American and French oak at the same time. So there's no there's no longer the, the day where you could sit there and go just from the oak and figure out where it came from. Because it may be temporary you know, real real. Um, you, that that one you can you can kind of uh, um, you kind of get that one because they used American oak for so long. Uh, and they age the wine. They don't release the wine just Okay, so uh with that said, so you get kind of that the creaminess of vanilla um, brighter red fruits, you know, more cherry driven, more cherry driven though, not dark cherry, but just kind of a nice, you know, a nice cherry aroma to it. Maybe even with like some, uh, even some dark fruit, maybe even kind of like blueberry. Which that's not a descriptor I use very often because I don't typically smell it very often. I don't get the floral, I don't get a whole lot of obvious wood other than the wood treatment, you know, what wood will do to it, but I don't smell any wood. Okay. Um, not much in the middle. It's a very high aspect. Um, remember, I'm not used to seeing myself at the same time. I'm just looking for a little light on the camera and just go. Um, I would never pick this out of the camera itself. Uh, I would sit there and just assume it's a camera so young, had a look for pictures that was then on the label. Um, very, you know, uh, 
not strawberry, but very cherry, raspberry pie um, aspect. Uh, tannins are moderate, medium, medium minus actually a little bit. Um, so it doesn't really hit you in the face. I'm not getting any bell pepper on this thing. Maybe a hint, maybe a hint of those peppers. Um, but it's just a well made wine, though. I think it's really nice. Uh, I mean, it's. I could, I could easily kick back, enjoy this wine. You know, I could enjoy this by itself. It's nice. I just, I don't, I personally would never have thought of thinking of the cabinet as Um But it's supposed to be, I think it's supposed to be 100% cabinet kind of fun. Uh, it doesn't say. It doesn't say on there. Let me look at the back label and see if it says anything on it. Um, this day was aged for 18 months in French oak. Then it's unfiltered. Oh, yeah, it's 100, no, 100% um, Unfiltered and unfined. So, um, and I know there was some sediment on the uh, neck of the bottle uh, from the wine being you know, stored like that. So I did see the sediment. So um, there's probably some nice sediment at the bottle. They, they did say, I remember the back of it said that they recommend some canting. Um, I just wonder for why. I just think better than the next. And it's fun. It's got a little bit of pepper, but. The typical Cabernet Franc style, but not there. I, I still think it's a great, great wine. Even 92. Alright, so moving on. Box the bottle. Also, it specs $42 for that. Alright, last one. We're going to have it actually 30 minutes or less. All right, so this half bottle, this is the Segla. Now, the Segla is um, the second, this is the second one from uh, Chateau uh, Luzon Segla. All right, um, they're in the Margot region of Bordeaux. So now, uh, this wine, um, as Hopefully everybody now knows. Well, uh, twenty dollars for the half bottle. That was on sale. So this is a half bottle. Uh, Two thousand five vintage. So we're now getting into where the two thousand five vintages should be really coming coming along. With. Seven years later, the two thousand five Bordeaux vintage is one of the best vintages of the decade of, of, of that of that decade. So. Um, this should be really good. It's a Cabernet, Cabernet Sauvignon based wine. Okay. It's going to have Merlot, Cabernet Franc in it. Um, and I think it also has Petit Verdot. If I remember the blend real quick. So let me get out of this one here. Um, yes. Now, the specific makeup of this wine I can't get. But um, uh, their vineyards, they have 61% Cabernet Sauvignon, 35% Merlot, and then 2% each of Cab Franc and Petit Verdot. Um, now, how much of each gets into the wine might be a little different, but that's what their acreage out, out is broken down. This is the second wine. So, um, this Chateau is a, um, a second growth in the Bordeaux 1855 classification. So, I'm going to kind of get through some of those. And this is the second wine. So what that means is that um, the first wine, the Grand Vin, is the wine that um, they use the best grape for. Okay, um, maybe they were they had the best quality at harvest. Maybe these were sorry. Ooh, well, maybe these were um, harvested before or after the grapes were at maximum ripeness or the maximum whatever harvestability. Um, 
but but these shouldn't be looked at as crappy. The, the full bottle is going to be about as much as that other as the uh, um should be just about as much money as a can of All right. So uh, let's check it out. I can do a little more. Can you say barnyard for days? There's there's definitely a a, a big manure smell. Hmm. Hay manure, you know, definitely barn. The barn. I mean, it's it's right there. I haven't had one of these. I haven't had one like this in a while. Maybe in just a year. For those that know, I was born there last year. Very dominant on that. I mean, that's what I. I that's one of those aromas that I, that I look for and that I key in on and that I get kind of distracted that I don't really think of anything else when I get that. So if there's other things in it, um, and I struggle trying to find them. So. But there, there's some fruits coming along too. I would say more raspberry than cherry on it. Not, I don't really get much strawberry at all, but you get those red fruits. Other than um, other than the barnyard aspect, I don't get much other minerality to it. I really don't get any floral. Really and even maybe kind of a caramel aspect to it, you know. So I'm excited about coming up with it. Maybe a little back up. Um, ooh, yeah. How you doing, uh, Red Pete? So, um, phenomenal. It's because I was at the hotel. I didn't even see this place when I was over there. I was saying, oh, yeah, I was just up the road. Medium plus on the tannins, you know, it was a good tannin structure for it. Um, really attacking the guns. Um, honestly, on the palate, Pretty fruit forward. Um, very, very fruity. Um, again, there's some high aspects to it. Um, more raspberry driven. Um, you know, so that bake, you know, bake aspect to it. Get a little bit of that smokiness to it. A little bit of smokiness. You don't get as much of the barnyard and, and, and all that on the palate. It's really more of a pate thing. Um, I think it's really good, but there is a bit of watery, wateriness to it. A little bit of thinness to it. Um, it's, you know, these, these wines are not meant to be in your face, big, bold, California Cabernet Sauvignons. Uh, so there's a bit of thinness to it. Uh, but it does really drink kind of, I don't know, kind of New Worldish. I'm drinking this. This is basically when I'm done with this. This is what I'm going to finish drinking the rest of the day. Then we'll watch the Vikings in preseason against the Texans. I did my football draft yesterday. Hit my uh, my keeper was Cam Newton. Uh, not Cam Newton. My keeper was Calvin Johnson. I was trying to get Cam Newton my first pick, but I ended up taking um, Adrian Peterson. I know some people think it's crazy for that because he's got the whole ECL thing. And he may not play for the shoes, but I had my Vikings with Gale on. The first time I've been able to get AP in like four years. Anyway. So, football. I can't wait for this to actually start. College football this week. Well, tonight actually, but Saturday. Now remember, I, I recorded this last week. This is Labor Day's show.
now it's not so fruit driven. There's more minerality to it, uh, more earthiness to it. Um, not really overt smoke, but you, you kind of feel like maybe the fire got put out, and you've got the embers there, kind of kind of glowing, and you might get a little bit like a hint, a whiff. Maybe the, maybe the embers aren't even going anymore. It's just kind of like the fire's been out for a couple hours, but you can still kind of the area still kind of smells like you you um, you have a campfire going. Um, All right. See, this is why I shouldn't have a viewfinder. I should just not have a way for me to see what I'm doing again. Because then I'll get really stupid. Nice. I also give this 92. Uh, at first I would say 95, but I thought we go over the top of that. I uh, want to try settling down, but 92. You can find this. I mean, there's also a 2004. I, I, I literally almost thought about buying. The, the the only other 2005 they have they only had one of the 2005 and they had about eight 2004. But I, no, <laughs> but I thought about buying the 2004 just to do a little comparison. But I didn't know what was going on with Cab France or Cab Cab Day, and and I didn't want to get over too the results. Now I think that's the definitely recommend it. Um, no wine 101 today, um, just because, well, this is kind of an off-the-cuff thing. I didn't really plan on anything. I, today, I planned to do Cabernet Day and record what I was with, and it didn't really happen. So, um, uh, your wine 101 was that Cabernet Sauvignon came from Cab Franc and Sauvignon Blanc. So, there you go. There's your Cab 101. Uh, we're going to wrap it up. Um, uh, kind of running a little bit longer than I thought I did. Uh, but I did four wines, so not bad. Not bad, you know, less than 10 minutes of wine. Um, that's pretty good, considering I usually take 10 minutes to be a wine. Um, as always, uh, I know the quality isn't the normal quality, but, you know, it, it shouldn't be too bad. I mean, from what I can see, the video looks pretty decent. Um, so, uh, but as always, friend me up above. Hey, who's this? Oh, yeah. That's that. No, this right here. Sorry. Friend me up above. <laughs> Right here to uh, click, click on the links up there to turn me up on Google Plus. I don't really use Google Plus much with the Hangout thing. It's the only way you can do it. And um, I'd like to do more Hangout type of stuff. Now I know I broadcast to Justin TV, um, but I wouldn't mind doing some Hangout. And I do Skype interviews, and I do that because I can record them. But I'm, this is really kind of an experiment to see how this looks. Um, see, with Google Hangout, when other people talk, the camera switches to them. So um, that might it's just the quality isn't as good as if I was getting everything into the, into the computer. But um, you know, it's kind of an experiment to see what it's like. Um, but uh, friend me up. Uh, click the links below. I have links to all of the multi nodes. Um, I'll have more links to all the all the wines, and um, so check them out. And then uh, hit the donate button. Um, <coughs> I know I put ads and all this stuff, but I really don't make any money on the ads. I mean, I just do them just to do them, because maybe one day I'll get a bunch of views on one of the videos. But um, put the donate button. You know, send a few dollars. I, I'm, I'm, I know the thing says about sending a thousand, thirteen hundred dollars, whatever. But um, and there's there's your subscriptions. You can do uh, five dollar a month subscriptions. Um, but you know, send, send a few bucks because it'll help pay for uh, pay for the loan. Um, that's gonna do it. Um, we will see everyone again next time. Thanks for stopping by.